Hey everyone, this is the ninth part in the C Sharp Best Practices video series. The links of the previous parts are given in the description of this video. So if you want to watch any of them before this one, then you can do that. But it is really not required because the content of these videos is not connected to each other. So they could be watched in any order or any sequence which might suit you. So before we start, I would like to request you all to subscribe to this channel if you think this video is helpful for you and you will be the first to know about any videos which I will add to this channel. Alright, so now let's move on to the first best practice that this video has to offer. The first one is functions or methods should not be too big. So bigger functions are very hard to manage and test and we should try to limit a methods application to one or two programming logics. Any more than that will make the method code lengthy and messy. In this code example, this method is looking pretty long and it is also doing so many different things. Now, if we must have large functions, then we should always use regions to indicate different code areas like it has been done over here. But still, if the method is too big to handle, even after dividing the different code logics into regions, then what we should do is we should refactor the big method as much as we can until the set of methods become manageable. To do that over here, what we can simply do is we just have to select the piece of code from which we want to extract a new method and then right click on it. Click on the first choice, which is quick actions and refactorings. When you will click on it, then you will be presented with a preview of changes which will take place after this action. And then you will have to click on this extract method. And then you will have to write the name of the method, which is the action, which is being done over here. And then you will need to click on apply. And that's it. Now you can check if this method has been created correctly or not. And there you go. Instead of having all of this code inside this method, you simply have refactored out all of that code into another method. It will also be easier to test this method when any change will come in, let's say this initial setup method, because these rest of the code logics will have no impact on them by whatever change that we might have introduced in this separated method. So these are a couple of ways in which you can manage bigger methods and it will be easier for you and everyone else whenever any new change will have to be done in the code base. Moving on to the second best practice, the properties with no code logic should be auto implemented. Now it is one of the very basic coding practice that properties which do not have a special getter and setter logic should be auto implemented to make the code cleaner and easier to manage. And this also includes read only properties. For example, in this code, there is a property which is name and there are separate getter and setters. But as you can see that these get and set blocks are not doing anything else apart from just getting and setting the value of this private underscore name field. So what we can do is instead of writing this piece of code like this, we can delete this entirely and then simply write get and set and that should be enough for this property to get working and then we can replace the reference over here too. And that's it. This is the shorthand version in which we can write the property if it does not have any special logic to let's say return or set any values. The reason that I have included this as a best practice because oftentimes developers forget to write the shorthand syntax and out of habit keep on writing the longer variant. The last one for this video is have both abstract and concrete methods in an abstract class. An abstract class is meant to have both abstract and concrete methods. And if you don't need to have concrete methods, then use an interface instead of an abstract class. Similarly, if you don't have any need of abstract methods and only need concrete fields and methods, then there is no need of having either an interface or an abstract class. In this code example, there is an abstract class, which is person. And you can see that there are both concrete and abstract methods in this abstract class. 
now this is the desired situation because this is what abstract class are meant to be to have both concrete and abstract fields and methods and this is it for this video guys do let me know what you think about it if you were able to understand the contents of this video if you of course have any questions or concerns then feel free to use the comments area also if you think that you like this video then please don't forget to place a like and subscribe to this channel if you want to be the first to know about the latest video updates i will see you in the next video till then have a great day